Separation is one of the most powerful tools we as producers can use in arrangement. Now, what is separation? Separation is just simply how we differentiate one element from another. And one of the most powerful ways of doing this is utilizing what's called vertical space. Whoa, 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 Nathan. <laughs> separation, differentiation, vertical space. What are we talking about right now? Gotta put you down here. Let me explain vertical space first. If you think about pitch, pitch works from low notes, very deep, all the way up to the high notes, very high. And every instrument has this. Every instrument has a specific range. Obviously the piano has 88 different notes that we can use. Guitar has I have no idea how many notes guitar has. <laughs> a lot of notes, many, many octaves it can play. And what so many music producers do, and not just producers, but just arrangers and composers too, is they write and create in such a way where they essentially compress vertical space. So vertical space is simply from the low notes to the high notes, how much space is in between. So if I play a note way down here, and then a note way up here, there's a huge amount of space in between. This is known as vertical space, and we can actually fill this space inwards. And that right there fills up a decent amount of space vertically. Now obviously I'm doing this just on a piano, a single instrument. Now here's what happens. What happens is, is a ton of producers write and they work and they arrange and produce in such a way where they compress the vertical space. In other words, they squeeze things down and they put things in a small amount of vertical space in terms of pitches, right? So you think about like a guitar, maybe you got like a chord, let's just say a power chord, something like that. But then you put your piano in here too. And then you put like a synth in here too. And then you put a whatever in here too, right? Whatever the instrument is. And by compressing this and putting a bunch of instruments in that same exact space in terms of pitch, you have as a result compressed the vertical space. And this is why so many producers have super, super messy sounding arrangements that don't work. All right, so how do we fix this? You do this, don't worry, we're gonna step over to the computer and I'm gonna actually show you some examples of doing this bad and some examples of how we can fix this literally immediately. So conceptually, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you are strategically placing your instruments and your sounds and your elements within the actual production itself vertically in a way that is strategic. Sometimes you do want sounds to be in the exact same vertical space, like this right here is an octave and a third. So if I have a chord progression like this, and then it you know, repeats or whatever, if I have the piano in this range here, and then I also have the guitar in this range, and then the synth in this range, and any other number of instruments in this range, that might end up sounding a little bit too messy, too muddy, like there's not enough happening. But if instead we start spreading this out where maybe the piano's here, and then you put the guitar up here, and then you put something else up here, and then you put something else up here, then all of a sudden you're actually expanding that vertical space. Part of our jobs as producers and as writers and composers or rangers is to be strategic and think through, how do I want to actually utilize all of this space that I have in terms of the pitches themselves? And in a lot of cases, we want to compress vertical space. In other words, you want to use a relatively narrow amount of space because that can actually make things feel a certain way, whether that's smaller or whether it just kind of makes something feel a little bit more dense in the middle or wherever it is that you're putting it. But a really crazy thing happens when you're talking about writing and you're utilizing vertical space is that the more you spread things out, the bigger it sounds and also the more differentiated it sounds. So if I put my strings up higher and then I have my piano down here and then maybe like a synth in the mid range, I'm now leveraging the entirety of this vertical space in a way that sounds a lot more interesting. Yes, 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 I know you're probably bored with that by now. Let's actually show some real examples here. Now before we actually jump in here, I do just wanna say I'm laying out more of a framework here. I'm not making black and white statements. I'm not even laying out any rules. I'm trying to give you something and a basis to think about when you're making music because like I said, there are times where you you want to compress things, you want things in the same range, and then there are other times where you want to spread things out. And I'm trying to more or less help you actually strategically think about this because if you don't have any intention behind it, that, that's when you have problems. Okay, so what I have here is literally the most basic chord progression you could ever have is minor progression in the piano. It's C minor, A flat major, E flat major, and then a B flat major. Now, I'm gonna be using literally the most basic instruments ever because that's all I need to do to demonstrate this. I'm using electric piano, guitar, synth, piano, and strings, and bass. So with this chord progression in the piano, we are literally hovering right in the mid range. So what I'm gonna demonstrate now is just by adding in some electric piano, 
just like this. In the exact same range as the piano. And I really want you to pay attention just with the piano and just with the electric piano, which are somewhat similar instruments. Just listen to how this sounds. This doesn't sound bad, right? But what I'm gonna do now is add in some guitar. <laughs> of course, this isn't like a real guitar. This is a uh, Native Instruments guitar. It doesn't sound terrible, but it could sound better. I'm gonna put it in the exact same range. Okay, hopefully immediately, you're noticing. This is not sounding great. You can understand the point. Some people might say you can just change the stereo field. In my opinion, that doesn't really fix the problem when the, really the problem is, is that everything is existing in the exact same vertical space. So in other words, we've compressed the vertical space. What I want you to really listen to is just the piano and the electric piano. It doesn't actually sound bad. But it's when we add that guitar, all of a sudden, by adding three instruments in that range, that are all different instruments, now all of a sudden our ears are kind of like, something sounds a little funky here, right? And so hopefully this can help you just hear that and then be aware of it, that when you're working, when you start noticing, hey, I have a lot of things happening in the same range, that might not be a good thing, right? That might be something you should just take a look at and say, hey, does this actually sound good or not? But what happens if the only thing we do is we just bump the guitar up an octave. That, I'm not gonna change anything else, but we're just gonna expand the vertical space. We're now gonna extend it by an octave. Now the sounds in this whole thing sound like crap, right? This is not like a pro sounding production by any stretch of the imagination, nor is it meant to be. It's meant to be an example here so I can teach you something. And I can just show you just by the chords alone, that makes a really helpful difference. But what I wanna show you now is what happens if we take this guitar and we try to do something melodic or um, maybe more of a pattern. Right, something a little bit more like an arpeggio, right? But we're gonna do it in the exact same range. So we're no longer adding these low notes, right? Which is part of the problem because they're low and they're now causing conflict. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add something in the mid range. This is right around the middle C range with the guitar, doing kind of a similar thing as the piano. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of reverb on here just to make it sound a little bit better. All right, so let's listen to the sounds like now. Now, this does not sound terrible, right? But listen to how much more interesting this is and how much it actually stands out to your ear. I'm not changing the volume, I'm not automating anything. The only thing I'm doing is increasing the octave. I'm gonna put it up an octave. Okay, so hopefully you can just understand that the only thing I'm doing is just changing where things happen vertically in terms of the amount of pitches we have to use. We are given a lot of different pitches to use. Let's actually use them. Now what's crazy is that if I bump this up an octave even more, That to me stands out even more. The guitar is standing out above, <laughs> obviously in a very literal sense, above the rest. But what's happening to me now is the separation between that guitar and everything else is now a two octave separation. There's now two octaves. So there's a lot of space in between that is not being utilized now. So what do we do with that space? And so this is where thinking about vertical space when it comes to arrangement is so helpful because if you have a lot of stuff here, kind of in the low mid range, and then a lot of stuff up here in the kind of higher range, and then nothing in the high mids, we'll call it, guess what? You're gonna almost feel this hole. There's, there's something missing there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fill that out with strings. I'm just gonna use a very sustained kind of Very simple. Let's 
Let's add some reverb on that, make it sound a little better. Now, let's listen to how this sounds. Guess what? Obviously, we have another sound, so sonically, we hear a unique sound in terms of timbre, because the strings sound different. However, by filling that space and putting something in the range that we had a gap in, we're actually expanding this to where now, hey, the guitar is sitting up here, the strings are here, and the piano and the electric piano are down here, and now we have more or less a pocket of where different instruments are supposed to be. And then listen to what happens when we add the bass. When we add that low end, all of a sudden, it feels like it's been completely rounded out. Look at that, all of a sudden we have only five instruments that sound relatively full. Is this what I would actually want to do in an arrangement? No, probably not. But the point here is that simple arrangements, even like this, where you've literally got like some chords, a little arpeggio thing, and then like chords, and then just the bass, that can sound pretty rich. Now, this is with everything right down the middle. There's no panning happening, so if you wanted to carve it out even further, it's great, you can do that. But I'm saying that you can actually create separation, which is what we talked about at the very beginning of this video, simply by changing where in terms of the vertical space things happen. If you put everything in the same octave, if you put everything too close in timbre, in register, then you are more likely going to have problems. And again, none of this is a rule, none of this is like do as I say or else. You need to use your ears when you're actually doing this. I'm trying to give you something that if you are playing with something, if you're arranging something, you're thinking, wow, this sounds a little messy, I'm just giving you something to look at and hopefully you can tackle. And you can take this very concept and you can leverage it and utilize it in really, really, really creative ways. So have fun.